Hey guys, I'm here with Doug. If you've seen a video, I don't know, six months ago, he helped me get my tailwheel here at Ethnos headquarters in Southern Arizona. So we're gonna go out while the winds are still nice and calm. And yeah, maybe even land on some of the airstrips that I did some of my training on here and just give him an opportunity to fly at Kit Fox and see how squirrely it is. So let's get going. Yeah, well that's why they have that. Should you be in here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, they should say, Passengers beware, this yes. is a toy airplane. Yeah, the Avid said that too. And the Avid had this size interior. Yeah. But these seats are much more comfortable than what it had. Yeah, this they is were... really kind of made for under 200 pound people. Yep. yep. But I figured we could just head up and you could play around with it, just kind of get the feeling yeah, like yeah. what it, what it yeah, feels yeah. like. And the Cub, from when I went from that, I had to get 10 hours of instruction in this before I could get an insured, basically. And the Cub is so much easier, oh, right? Man, it is so much easier. The Cub is a sweetheart. Like that, you can push forward and, and it doesn't yeah. matter if you're pushing which way and you're, yes. you're fine. And this thing, you push and you get off this much and your wing's now And the dropping. wing is coming up. Yes, that's how the Avid was. And you're like, oh, this is very scary. I never Until flew, you get yep. like the, how much control yes. movement you need to put in, yes. then it's easy, but yep. yeah. So this engine's been a happy thing for you, it's worked fine? It has, yep. no problems whatsoever. I've got yep. almost 230 hours yep. on it. And you said this is 2-2 two, two and... Two, zero 04 and 2-2. Zero two, two. That's what we call it. Ethnos Air, Kit Fox 2-4 Kilo Bravo will be departing on 0-4, Ethnos Air. All right, well, here we go. Here we go. All right, well, I figured we could just have fun flying around wherever. Oh, yeah. Um, nice. Well, <laughs> I'd like to head out this way out here because I haven't been out Yeah. that way. In, oh, but I haven't really flown here in like 10 years at least. Right. Yeah, there's, it, there's a lot of fun places out there. So well, we're climbing at it? 75 right now, between yeah, 75 and 80. 500 feet-ish per minute. Yeah. So yeah, you have flight controls. Okay. You feel the rudder. Oh yeah. Boy, it really does. It moves around, respond, doesn't, it? doesn't it? Yeah. Playing with the rudder. Yep, and if I need to, I can move your pedals back closer to you. Oh, they're pretty good. Okay. Yeah. The thing I noticed the first when I got this is how much your RPM changes. Yes. With just yes. a tiny push or pull, it's changing by 200. Sometimes I would RPM. wonder if there was something wrong with the engine that's on the Avid in bumpy air because it would hunt up and down a lot. Yep, that's exactly. A lot of RPM change. Uh, like this arm was tired from going like this yesterday with yeah. all the updrafts. Because you're worried about over revving it sometimes. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Constant speed prop would be sweet. Yeah, it really would. Nothing else to go wrong. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wish this was a. I wish this was an adjustable. I've got a buddy who has one. with just a little button uh -huh. for takeoff and. Oh cruise. wow! And yeah, like, man, that Maybe. would be really nice. Try a couple of little, just a little shallow turns. What the first thing that hits me is that wow, the aileron, the ailerons are heavy. You know, they're heavy, but they're respond, they're quick, but they're. It takes more force to to turn them than I thought it would. Yes. yes, they are heavy, but they but they move quick though. Yep. yep. Or at least they maybe move your wing. Yeah, quick. they do. Yeah, where that cub, you can just play all yes. around all day long. Yep. It really doesn't do that much. And I miss riding my motorcycle out here. Yep, I bet that was fun. I think I put on in my just my last time we were here, just for a few months, I put on 5,000 miles in five months. And. So pretty much I've explored all these mountains within about a hundred mile range. Mm -hmm. There used to be. I'd like to head over here. Um, uh -huh. There's a cave that I found yeah. last time we were here um, and Jeremiah took me on a helicopter ride and we saw it. So I rode my oh. motorcycle out there and oh, yeah, hiked yeah. up to it. But it was, is okay. Is it the other it's, side of Leslie Canyon here? Or uh, okay, where is actually the, um, whatchamacallit, that uh, Castle Rock or whatever it's called? Oh, that's, that's over there. All right, let's head into the valley over there, because okay. I know that it's over that yeah, way. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to fly right towards Leslie Ranch. Right. We probably right. just level off here. Okay. And I'm going to just let this thing get down to like 5,200 RPM. That row of mountains going down, if we just go on yep. the right side of that. The right side of that ridge going yep. around, yep. 
There's a there's an airstrip that they use for practice here. That's oh, really? Way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know I'm going to be going out to hopefully out to McKinley and Rocker M tomorrow. Oh yeah. And maybe shooting a McKinley video. McKinley is this is the one I'm talking about. Oh, okay, yep. yeah. It's out that way. I haven't been to either of those. But do they have other strips that they go to now? Or is it just those two? Yeah, McKinley, <laughs> McKinley and Rocker M and then the ones in the middle of the of the property over okay. there. That's yeah. all that's, that's all they got. And so what's considered the graduation strip now? McKinley. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I guess that's what it was for me as yeah. well. Yeah. I think it's like 900 feet or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice uh, runway. You there's a flat spot to land on. Then you go up a hill. Yep. There's really nothing to it. No, but there's like the drop off at the end. Yeah, of the there's runway, a drop off. There's and a ledge. That just gives you this illusion that just yep. like you have to like look past that. We actually have the nugget was similar to that. The yeah. The where truth. You look where you want to go, and you don't worry about anything else. Don't think about that. that other yeah. Yep. Yep. I was never one of those put it right, 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 right on the end sort of a guy because of those ledge airstrips. You know, like, I, no, I can give up a few airplane lengths. Yep, my first, <laughs> my first term, I was flying the air van, and I used to yeah pride myself that I could land close to the end and, yep. until I had one of those little crap moments. Oh, buddy. And then I was like, you know what? I think oh, I'm just going to yeah. extend it at least 60 meters into the runway is yeah. where I'm kind of aiming to shoot around that. You know, yep. 100, well, close to 180 feet off the end of the runway. Oh, and yeah. It gives you a little more margin for downdrafts yep. and things like that. You don't get an attaboy for landing close to the end of the runway. You can't cash attaboys in. <laughs> no. No, I've had some really close calls. I Really close calls. I had one where I could have flipped that 185. Oh. There were marks on the front edge of the of the place where my <laughs> mains hit. I hit a sinker and I whoo, like that and and it my tailwheel hit the ledge and popped the thing up on the wheels and I, it stopped, up, can turned around, came back to unload and I got out of the airplane and walked over and looked at that. Yep. I wish I'd have taken a picture. Yeah, those are I call leg shakers where you're oh, buddy. pumping so much you can't even keep your legs yep. from shaking. It's my last one of the day. I was tired. I'd been in and out of there about six times. Yep. All right. Um, it's right along this mountain right here, because I know that I rode my motorcycle yep. up into, somewhere down in here and then hiked up. Um, I think it's right over there. I'll okay. Slow us you down. want the airplane? Yeah, I have the plane. You got it. There's actually... All right. Yeah, I would think if, if I was going to be a cave, I would be in there somewhere. Right? Drug stuff. Okay, right there. Right there. Oh, that one. Yeah. Wow, look at that thing. It goes in, and then it has, like, a another cavern room in the back. Oh, but yeah. But you can't see back there very well. But yeah. there's, like, sleeping bags in there. And, you know. Right. Well, let me go back and see if there's, um, how far out is uh, Oh, it's just, just on over there a little bit. Oh, is it? Oh, yep. well, let's just go over there real quick, because yep. I, I have to it's, look for them tomorrow. And I was as like, I recall, it's before this stuff goes up. I may be looking at it. No. Okay. It's, yeah, I yeah, thought I'd it was, say our present heading is about right. Yeah, I thought it was like right over there yeah, in between it, these uh -huh. two mountains because yep. you go over yep. the ridge and then yeah, turn around. Uh huh. And then, uh, was it Rocker M is just yep. kind of at the base of those yep. mountains down right. there. Yep. Down close to the border, you get visited there sometimes. Green stripe guys. Yeah, I thought about that. I might actually. <laughs> I'll uh -huh. land and fly the drone around and wait for him to come by uh -huh. Uh -huh. and say hello. <laughs> Yeah, this looks like yeah, it right it. here. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. And I have no clue about the condition of it, although you have, um, usually they come over here and, and uh, with a helicopter and look it over. Yeah, they Darren just called them yesterday for me. Okay, because it and really they, rode. And they said that they've already cleaned it all up and everything, so uh -huh. it's good to go. Yeah. As far as I remember, it was around 900-ish feet, and yeah, I yeah. think it went up maybe like a 6 or 7% slope. It yep. was flat at the bottom and then 7%. Yeah, I've been in and out of there with a 185 quite a bit. Okay. Well, cool. I'm looking forward to that. 100 years ago. Yeah. I love it back and in And we'll here. see if we go see Rocker M, because that was one of actually my yeah. favorite ones. Yeah. Because it was so skinny. It was only like, I mean, we had like three feet off each what wheel. I, I know no. it's like really close to the border, like yep. three yep. miles or... Yep. Now, where's the border on our GPS here? I don't know. <laughs> it all, look, not it all looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that dotted line right there. Yeah. Okay, so I know it goes up the hill like uh -huh, this. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I know there was a wash sort of kind of, 
I know that you'd kind of turn your base over a wash. Yeah. And this was like 10 years ago. It's so. been a long time. Well, I see the fence down there, so. As long as we don't go past that. Okay, go past uh, Donald Trump's fence. All I remember is the wash. And it was a 3% yeah. hill coming up. Yep. But then again, we have a million washes and out here. And when you see it, it's like, oh, yeah, because it's very... Oh, right defined. here. Very defined. Right here. There we go. Right over. Yeah! <laughs> That's it. All right, that looks like it's in good condition. Let me just fly over it and just yeah. buzz down it and take a look. Just for tomorrow. Uh-huh. It was a lot longer than I thought. It was 1,300 feet, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it looks pretty wrong. long. But I think it was 1,300 feet. Are there detents in your flaps? Yeah, I got okay. four of them. Most, wow. Most kit foxes have three. Yeah. From what I've been told, but um, all right, yeah, that thing disappears pretty quick on you too. Yeah. But yeah, these Rotaxes do sound like a remote control airplane. Yep. This one sounds super smooth, though. I love the sound of these 912s. Deck for. We have the white tires for the uh -huh. boxes. The box. Yep. Oh, oh man. Looks like it's you could land a couple of times on that runway. Yeah. That thing's long for this. I do remember that. There was always a crosswind here, too. Yeah, you've got a pretty good crosswind today. Yep. Well, cool. I'm looking forward to coming out. I really love that one. I don't know why, but <laughs> there's something about just landing on dirt roads that just yep. makes it, like, more, I don't know, exciting or something. I don't well, really it's, know. Well, it's fun when you're super uh, used to your airplane, too, when you know how it's supposed to feel. I'm looking at that and I'm going, I wouldn't land this thing on that. I wouldn't think you might have missed because I, it, in the Cub, yeah, I would. You know, the Cub, I feel like I can make it do whatever I want. Yeah. Yep. I'm still like, I'm still learning this plane, I feel like. Uh -huh. I really do enjoy it, but it's definitely like more of a challenge. With the, the Kodiak, like I don't have to think about what I'm doing. Right. I feel like. Yeah. I just feel everything and it's just really easy. Right. Where this, I'm just like, uh, yeah. I guess I don't fly it every day with the Kodiak here out every single day flying, so. I'm, I'm sure an old like enough that. guy now at 66 that I, when I dream of owning an airplane, believe it or not, probably got a nose wheel on it. Yeah. And the reason, here's why. I picture myself going to a fly-in, like I want to go up to Copper State or something. And uh, I go up in the morning, and it's nice in my tail tailwheel airplane like this. But in the afternoon, you know, it's howling <laughs> and belching and carrying on. And I'm yep. like, do I want to be <laughs> that in an guy. airplane that wants to bite me in the butt yep. the first chance I'm not paying attention? Uh, I don't know. I had my most stressful takeoff. <laughs> Probably, I would venture to say almost ever, at least the type of condition for sure. Right. I've had some pretty stressful ones in New Guinea. Yep. But this, by far in this plane, my son and I went camping. Yep. And I don't know if those mountains dropped. I think they dropped down around this side, I think. Uh -huh. um, went camping. It was forecasted, well, at least where I live, that it's going to be beautiful, low, low winds. Right. Well, this was a 45-minute north near the Grand Canyon where you couldn't get weather, right. and um, woke up around 10, 11 p.m. at night with 20 knot winds, and I'm like, oh no, this is not good. This isn't good. Sustained the whole night into the morning, just constant 20 mile an hour winds. I was like, man, what? this is horrible. Didn't even like get up to make breakfast. We just immediately took the tent down, and so they had two runways at this old BLM like mining uh -huh. site. And these are just dirt runways. And of course, um, the wind, the direction it was coming, it was a 19 knot crosswind regardless. I did my little math didn't calculator. didn't matter where you... It didn't matter if I went on this one or this one. It was a full on, yep. nearly 90 degree crosswind. Just pick which direction and you wanted. And I was it. like, oh man, it was the strongest crosswind I've ever taken off in a tailwheel, for wow. sure. So, I was like, well buddy, like, we've got to get out of here because I, it, yeah. I knew that what the, if winds, this gets worse? the winds were just going to be sustained for the next few days. Right. This yeah. was the only day, so I was like, man, we got to go. So it was a takeoff that was n nearly full controls over. Like, I mean, my wing was like yeah. off all the way. Yep. It was extremely stressful. I was like, man, if I was like giving him a brief. All right, if this doesn't work, this is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I want you to do. Yep. 
Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was That's pretty nervous. That's no fun. That is no nope. fun. But then once we got off the air, once we got up maybe a few thousand feet off the ground, perfect smooth flight right. home. I was like, what? Right. Yep. I'm glad we were able to get out while it's still nice out. Yeah, like, this is very decent. I, I looked at the weather last night and it was like, I think it said 15 to 25 mile hour winds. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I can't get yeah. away from this stuff. Yeah. We've had a lot of wind this year. Car. This is the 1400 foot? It is. Okay. Yep. And then, yep. And then, then the thousand to, footers across so over there. Maybe for the viewers, like, what did this place used to be? Like, where did these runways come from? Because clearly they used to go this place, a lot longer. These were, there were more runways than you eat. Well, you, the 1400 foot is just an extension of one of the runways that uh -huh. used to be. And the all of these runways were an auxiliary strip for Bisbee Douglas Airport where they used to train bomber pilots back in World War II. Oh, okay. This was an auxiliary airstrip. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, cool. And it used to be asphalted. All of these were asphalted runways. Really? It's all crumbled into nothing over the years. Really? Yes. Well, let me pretty, just fly over the windsock and just crazy. see uh, what the winds are doing here. The little airplane on a stick says it's from the south. Would, oh. It uh, would... Okay. I, I like that because let yeah. me fly over so people can see it. Yeah. Um, basically, it the little airplane just points the, points the direction you need to land. Yes. That's pretty cool. And what kind of that airplane plane? is a fun story. I don't know what kind of airplane it is, but a guy built it himself, put a small block hot rod Chevy in it, and scared himself on the first takeoff. <laughs> and then he, he abandoned the whole thing and gave the airplane to us. And that's what we decided to do with it. it looks like I need to land in between the two runways. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh no, it's pretty much going straight down. Yeah. The runway now. Yeah, yeah. You'll have a little bit of a crosswind on one seven. Hey, yeah. Is that a 20 knot um, sock, or what is that? I would say. All right, it looks like maybe like six to eight kind of fluttering. I could pull my phone out and see what it is. Oh, is there like a... a weather station on top of the hangar. Oh, is there? Let me see if I can... Ethnos. We're 4,200 feet here? 4,200. All right, well, I'll just We do patterns at 5,000. Yep. It is out of the south-southeast between seven and eight miles an hour. Hey, look at that, that's so a pretty good guess. The knuckles are gonna be white today. <laughs> we have boxes painted out here? Or uh, I yeah. See, I see yeah. one. There's one, I think there's one on every runway. And for the viewers, we used to paint these boxes, I think they're 30 feet wide by 90 feet. Yep. There's one right there by the windsock. Yep. And we would uh, attempt to land our Turbo 206 in that little box. Our chief pilot used to say those boxes repel airplanes. <laughs> All right, we'll come in at 60 until short final. Your I'll airspeed is in miles per hour, correct? Yeah, yep. I always say knots, but it's because yeah. I'm so used to it, but I know it's, it's miles an hour. But then I have this set up for knots. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, that's yeah, in knots. Do. Yeah. Just because I was curious to know what this thing actually uh -huh. flew at. Yeah. Tiny bit of wind, man. Makes this thing just bit. rock oh, over. Yeah. It's just probably be good training for helicopter with how little you move the stick. Feel those little bits of gustiness. Feel everything in one of these. Well, still at the box. Did yep. not the most amazing, but yep. <laughs> That's about it. Well, thanks for coming. I oh, appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah. I was. I don't know. I wasn't even sure how you got here. Oh, really? Yep. And now I can answer my own question uh, <laughs> that I had this morning. How will you get to my house for dinner? I know how you'll get to my house for dinner. <laughs> yeah. I well, thank you. Yeah. Ryan, that was I'm awesome. Glad that worked out. That was awesome. Doug, thanks so much for going with me. Absolutely. It was a pleasure to be able to go out with you and just have you, man, see what it's been like for me for the past six yes. or so months with it. But thank you so much. You bet. Next video, guys, I'm going to be going back out to those places we just flew over. And there's a few runways here, a 1,000 foot and a 1,400 foot or 1,500 feet that I'll also go out on, hopefully, with this. And just so you guys can see where I got some of my training to be flying overseas. So see you guys next time.